many in the academic community call you lucky or um, a statistical outlier. Uh, Mr. Munger, I'm not sure what they call you. But, uh, <laughs> Well, I, you're free to speculate on what they uh, call it. <laughs> I know uh, you don't like to forecast the equity markets, but uh, maybe you would dare to forecast the evolution of the debate between proponents of the efficient market theory and value investors. And as an addendum, um, are your designated suc successors, are they uh, outliers as well? <laughs> well, we like to think they are, and, and they may be more outliers than we are. The, uh, the market is generally, and uh, you know, I, to me, it, it's almost self-evident if you've been around markets for any length of time that the market in, is generally fairly efficient. It's fairly efficient as pricing between asset classes. It's fairly efficient in terms of evaluating specific businesses. But being fairly efficient does not makes uh, does not suffice uh, to support an efficient market theory approach to investing or to uh, all of the shoots that have come off of that in the academic world. So if you'd believed in efficient market theory uh, and been taught that and adapted, uh, adopted it for your own 20 or 30 years ago or 10 years ago, I think it probably hit its peak about 20 years ago. Uh, you know, it would have been a terrible, terrible mistake. It would have been like learning the Earth is flat. It, uh, it just you would have had you would have you'd have had the wrong start in life. Now, it became terribly popular in the academic world. It almost became uh, a required belief in order to hold a position. It was what was taught in all the advanced courses and and a mathematical theory that. In, involved other other investment questions was built around it so that if you went to the center of it and destroyed that part of it, it, it really meant that people who'd spent years and years and years getting PhDs found their whole world crashing around them. I would say that it's uh, I would I would say that it's been discredited in a fairly significant way over the last decade or two. I mean, you don't hear people talking the same way about it as you did uh, 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, but the market generally is fairly efficient in most ways. I mean, it is hard to find, it's hard to find securities that are inefficiently priced. There are times when it's relatively easy, but right now, for example, it's difficult. Um, there are I don't know exactly how much it's wholly writ still in business schools. I, I certainly get the impression as I go around talking to business schools that it is far less regarded, regarded as, uh, as um, you know, sort of unquestioned dogma that it, uh, like it was 15 or 20 years ago. The University of Florida now has some uh, courses in valuing businesses. The uh, University of Missouri is putting in one. Uh, and uh, uh, I think the high priests of efficient market theory uh, uh, are probably not in the same demand for speaking engagements and seminars and all of that as they were a decade or two ago. Uh, it's hard though, to, it's very interesting, it's hard to dislodge uh, a belief that becomes sort of, uh, becomes the dogma of a finance department. It's, it's so challenging to them. And, you know, they have to, at age 30 or 40, to go back and say what I've learned up to this point and what I've been teaching students and all of that is, is silly. That doesn't come easy to people. Uh, Charlie? Well, you know, Max Planck, the great physicist, said that even in physics, uh, the old guard really didn't accept the new ideas. The new ideas prevail in due course because the old guard fades away clinging to the as an entities of the past. And that's what's happened to the hard form efficient market theorists. They're an embarrassment to the scene and they will soon be gone. On the, <laughs> the people who think the market is reasonably efficient or roughly efficient, uh, of course, are absolutely correct and that will stay with us for the long pull.
Thinking it's roughly effi efficient, though, does nothing for you in academia. You can't build anything around it. I mean, that, that, what, what people want are what they call elegant theories, and it just it doesn't work. Uh, you know, what investment is about is valuing businesses. I mean, that is all there is to investment. You, you sit around and you try to figure out what a business is worth, and if it's selling below that figure, you buy it. That, to my, uh, you, you, you can't find a course virtually in the country on how to value businesses. You can find all kinds of courses on how to, you know, how to compute beta or whatever it may be, because that's something the instructor knows how to do, but he doesn't know how to value a business. So the important subject doesn't get taught, and it, it's tough to teach. Uh, I think Ben Graham did a good job of teaching at Columbia, and I was very fortunate to run into him many decades ago. But if you take the average PhD in finance and uh, ask him to, to value a business, uh, he's got a problem. And if he can't value it, I don't know how he can invest in it, so therefore he, it's much easier to take up efficient market theory and say it doesn't make any difference because everybody knows everything about it anyway. And uh, uh, there's no sense in trying to think about valuing businesses, that the market's efficient, it's valued them all perfectly. About on the second day in that course. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the first, you know, you walk in, you say, you know, everything's valued perfectly, and, and uh, class dismissed. So I, it, it, it puzzles me, but I encourage you to look for the inefficiently priced. Zone three. Berkshire, incidentally, was inefficiently priced for a long time, at the, uh, and it wasn't on the radar screen. Of, you know, if you'd asked an academic how to value it, they, they wouldn't have known what to look at exactly. <laughs>